Let me tell you a story. There was a time when Jesus was speaking to the Apostle Peter. Let me tell you a story. 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 Te voy a contar una historia. There was a time. There was a time. There was a time when Jesus was sitting down with people to eat. There was a time when Jesus was in the temple. There was a time when an expert in the Old Testament stood up to test Jesus. And he told him this story. Let me tell you a story. There was a time when Jesus was speaking to the Apostle Peter, and he told him this story. The kingdom of heaven is like a king who wanted to settle accounts with his servants. As he began the settlement, a man who owed him 10,000 talents was brought to him. Since the man couldn't repay the debt, the servant's master ordered that he and his wife and his children and all that he had be sold in order to repay the debt. The servant fell on his knees and begged him, be patient with me and I will pay you back. The servant's master took pity upon him, canceled the debt and let him go. But when the servant went out, he saw one of his fellow servants that owed him 100 denarii. He grabbed him and began to choke him. Pay back what you owe, he demanded. The servant fell on his knees, began to beg him, be patient with me and I will pay you back. But he refused and instead he went off and had the man thrown into prison so that he could pay back all that he owed. When the other servants saw what had happened, they were greatly distressed. They went to their master and told him everything. Then the master called in the servant. You wicked servant, he said. I cancel all of that debt of yours because you begged me to. So why couldn't you show mercy to your fellow servant just as I have shown mercy to you? In anger, the master turns him over to the jailers to be tortured until he could pay all that he owed. Puddles of brains everywhere. Yeah, just, I, I, just, I hope you understand that this story is one of those stories that if you really digest it, if you get it, if you bring it in and you really understand it, it will never be the same. And that's why it's awesome. Okay? So, uh, we have this amazing story. And it's all about mercy. Okay? It's all about mercy. And if you're looking at your Bible, it's found in, uh, found in Matthew chapter 18. Matthew chapter 18. You know, last week we talked about charity. We talked about charity. And... Um, We talk about charity, we talk about love, and, and one of the things I want to just, I want to go back and just touch on that for a second. You know, love and mercy don't necessarily mean acceptance of evil. There's a difference. You know, oh, I love that. You know, love and mercy, forgiveness, these things don't necessarily mean going back to the situation that is toxic. You can love somebody, and you may have to love them enough to let them go. You know, some of the situations, well, you know, my, I'm in a, an abusive relationship. But the Bible tells me I need to love unconditionally. Yes, absolutely. Should you let yourself get beat up every day? No. Love is not acceptance. Love is not uh, putting yourself in danger. So we have, to be, we have to be careful when we talk about love. We talk about mercy. We talk about these things. Because we can often uh, make it sound like, you know, we just need to be you know, punching bags and pin cushions and let people walk all over us. That's not true. Okay, not true. But it does mean that we have to release people so that they cannot hurt us by the constant stress of their, their what they've done to us. Being, you know, when you can forgive somebody for the, for the things that they've done, it frees you. It frees you. Just don't, and the concept is you don't want to go back into that bondage. 
Okay, just, just a little bit of, we were talking about it around the table the other day um, after service, and we kind of got into that topic, and I felt like I needed to kind of touch on that. So, mercy. What is the definition of mercy? Mercy is compassion or forgiveness shown towards someone whom it is within one's power to punish or harm. It's within your power, within somebody's power to punish or harm somebody, yet you decide not to. You forgive instead of taking retribution, or you forgive instead of, uh, instead of holding them to their word. That's mercy. The story of the unmerciful servant. You had to kind of, like we did last week, you got to kind of dissect the characters a little bit. We have a king. It seems to center around the king and what he does. The second servant, uh, second is the servant. The story kind of spins on the servant who is forgiven and won't forgive. Who has shown mercy yet is not merciful. The third is the servant, servant, who kind of brings a story to its moral. So the story begins with a king who decides that he needs to settle accounts. What does that mean? It means that he has accounts. That he has, he's written it down. He's, he's by the book. He has a CPA working with him. He's, he's got, he knows what's going on with his servants. It's not just like, whoa, nothing, you know, whatever. You know, he, he's, you know, I need to settle my accounts. And he brings this man in and this man owes him something. Owes him, and he has the books to prove it. He's got the ledger sheet. He's got the, 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 the debits and the credits all on two, you know, on the columns. He knows what he's doing. He's, he, he's a God. He's a king who is All about knowledge and understanding where people are at. Okay? He has books. He keeps accurate records, pluses and minus. The debt is essential to understanding how the story moves and flows. This debt would have been understood by the people hearing it originally where you and I kind of just don't get it. This is the part that blew my mind. So... Uh, Dave, if you could get the um, the wet wipes and hand them out. Now oh, here we go. Um, it just it's just one of those things that is just out of this world. You wouldn't know it unless you really studied it. And it says this: a denarii, denarii, is a day's wage. Okay, day's wage. Six. Thousand denarii make up one talent. Okay? So that's 6,000 days for one talent. Day's wage. The debt is 10,000 talents, which is the equivalent of 60 million days of work. This is what this man owed him 60 million days of work. That's insane. That is that. I mean, what is that saying? What is Jesus saying when he tells the people who understand the monetary values of the day? What is he saying? This is an impossible debt. This debt could never be paid in a lifetime. This man owes this king so much money that it's just, it's impossible to pay it back. There's no way he could pay it back. They understand it's a lot of money. It is an unpayable sum of money. Matthew 18, 28 says this. When the servant went out, he found one of his fellow servants who owned, owed him a hundred denarii. Three or four months of wages. He grabbed him and began to choke him saying, pay back what you owe me. His fellow servant fell to his knees and begged him, be patient with me and I will pay back in full. All right, where have we heard that before? Those are the same exact words, the same exact forbatim that the original servant said to the king. Except 
what he was saying to the king was impossible. Be merciful with me. Give me some time. Okay, how about 60 million days? I mean, what he, he said, I will pay it back in full. What he, was, what he was claiming to be able to do was absolutely impossible. Then he comes out and he talks to a man that owes him about three months of labor. And he says the same exact thing. Be patient with me and I will pay it back in full. This man could have actually done it. Do you see the contrast here? The the whole point of this is the vast contrast that Jesus is making between what the king has done and what this man was, was willing to do for somebody under him. Folks, we have been put in a place today where unsurmountable, unpayable debt has been paid. Yet, we hold grudges. Yet we have unforgiveness in our hearts. Now, I'm not, I'm not minimizing this man's debt. It was a big debt. I mean, three months of pay? This guy hasn't paid up? No wonder this guy owes this king so much. <laughs> I mean, his servants aren't paying their bills. I mean, I, mean I, can, I get it. I'm not saying that people haven't done something to you. I'm not saying they haven't wronged you. I'm not saying you haven't had a miserable experience with, with, with somebody at some point in your life. You know, I, you know, as a pastor, we get conversations that go a lot deeper sometimes than, than what other service conversations. I hear about the struggles that people go through in their childhoods with people and parents and things like that. I hear about those things. Abuse situations. And I get it. It's miserable. I don't blame those people for being angry, for being just... But listen, when you forgive, when you show mercy to somebody, what you're saying essentially to them is, you don't owe me anymore. You don't own me anymore. I'm free from you. I used... You you, you hurt me. And then... My anger, my frustration, my malice towards you has hurt me every single day since. But when we can get to that point, and it's only through the power of the Holy Spirit, please understand me, it's not something that is natural. It's absolutely 100% supernatural. But when you can get to that point where you say, I forgive you. I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to let you go. I'm going to let this debt slide. You free yourself from allowing that person to, on, to ongoing hurts in your life. It's a freedom thing. It's a freedom thing. If you want somebody to, that's hurt you in the past, that has, that has owed you something, that, that, that has, has, has put some, a weight on you, a, a debt on you, and you want to be free of that debt, you have to let them go. Remember, forgiveness is not accepting what they did. Mercy is not saying what you did is okay. No, this, guy, this king was by the books. He knew exactly what was going on. He knew exactly, to the penny, to the d- denarii, what was going on. And he said, you know what? It's okay. I'm releasing you from this. If that's what our king has done for us, how much more? Ought we to show mercy to uh, our, each other? It's not easy. It's not easy. I trust me. When I talk about this topic, I know about ninety nine percent sure that almost everybody in this room is visualizing a face. I am. It's not easy. One of the sad parts about real life is that sometimes it really hurts. Hopefully you're not envisioning the person sitting next to you. I don't know. Yeah. 
If it's the person sitting next to you, don't look at them. Don't, don't do it. It might not be a good dinner. If it is the person sitting next to you, maybe we need to set up an appointment. <laughs> uh, but the idea is this. Always, life is, life is going to be full of hurts. We live in a fallen world. How we handle those hurts and how we either hold on to them or release them to God will determine the way we live, the peace that we have, the ability to move into greater things in our lives without being shackled to something. Okay? So, now, this gets a little bit difficult to hear, so here we go. Some other servants saw what the king's servant had done. A lot of servants in this story. Servant, servant, servant. So other servants of the king saw what the forgiven servant had done to his fellow servant. And they were amazed. They were greatly distressed and went and told their master everything that had happened. Their master, um, then the master called the servant in. You wicked servant, he said. You should have shown mercy just as I had shown mercy to you. And this is, this is important because if you haven't caught it yet, the king represents God. Okay, this is important. In anger, his master turned him over to the jailers to be tortured until he paid back all he owed. Ooh. You know what he owed was an insurmountable debt. He, there's, no, there's no way this guy could come up with the money for it. So know what his payment was? A pound of flesh. He took it out of his hide. He said he handed him over to be beaten. Took it out. People, don't like to, people do not like to think about God in that way. That's not, that's, not, that's not cozy. It's not like, oh, God, yay, merciful, loving. Wait a minute, hold on a second. What did he do in the beginning of the story? Listen, folks, you want to throw God's gift back in his face? That's your choice. There's consequences for being in debt to the maker of the universe. There's consequences to that. He sent his son so that you don't have to pay those consequences. He, he forgave your debt in full by taking a pound of flesh out of his own son. More than a pound. If you choose to throw that back in his face, it's on you, it's on me. Jesus is telling a story here that says, this is how it is. In light of what God has done for you, this is how you ought to treat. He was talking to Peter. Peter was asking him a question. How many times should I forgive? How many times should I be forgiving? How many, how many times should I show mercy? And Jesus answers him with this story. What do you think the answer is? To Peter's inquiry. Infinite. You have been forgiven infinitely. Therefore, forgive. Show mercy in abundance. In total. If you haven't, if you can't, then you just don't get it. Then you just don't get it. You don't get what God has done. You have, you have not experienced the transform, sort of transformative power of somebody who has been in death, in destruction, in depression, and then God has come into their life and has raised them out of that and brought them to a higher plane. You haven't experienced that because once you experience that, things should change. Things should change. Your, the way you look at life should change. The way you treat people should change. If it hasn't, the Bible says you will know them by their works. If your works don't match your words, be on your guard. It's a dangerous place to be. Now, we are not to judge one another. Why? Because we don't know. Judgment is reserved for God. 
But just that statement says that there is going to be a judgment. So I'm not going to sit here and judge Vaughn and Trish. I'm not going to say, oh, your actions, blah, 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 blah. That's God's business. But when I say that, it sounds so nice. You know, it's God's business. I oh, love you. But what I'm saying is that it's actually God's business. You got to deal with him on that stuff, right? I'm, I'm picking on you, sorry. But you're in the front row. So uh, everybody's going to sit back next week. But that's how I'm gonna sit in here. But the concept is this. It is God's business. So when he does it, don't be surprised. When, he, when, 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 when the time comes, if we're not genuine with God and we haven't experienced that, there is going to be a reckoning for those who throw God's grace and mercy back in his face. So the answer is this. How, how much mercy should I show people? Just think about the mercy God showed you and you have your answer. It'll rock your world. It'll change your life if you internalize it. It'll change the way you see people. It'll change the way you see the, the world. It'll change the way you interact with people. It will change things. We will be a lot more loving, a lot more compassionate, a lot more, you know, I know you, I, I hate to even use the word tolerant, but you'll be more gracious. And I dare say, you will be more like Jesus. That's the church I want. That's the church God has called me to lead. A church that is as merciful and loving as God is. Oh, man. That, that church will change the world. That church is the church that the gates of hell will not prevail against. That is the church that he's called us to be. Just in closing here. Ephesians 4.24 says this, Put on the new self, created after the likeness of God and true righteousness and holiness. Therefore, having put away falsehood, let each one of you speak the truth with his neighbor, for we are members one of another. Be angry and do not sin. What is it? Oh, I can't be angry with anybody? I have to be merciful? No, it says be angry but don't sin. It's okay to know what's wrong and what's right. But don't sin in that knowledge. And give no opportunity to the devil. See? Let the thief no longer steal, but rather let him labor, doing honest work with his own hands so that he may have something to share with one another's needs. Let no corrupting talk come out of our mouths. Let only such as good for the building up as fits the occasion that it may give grace to those who hear. And do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God by whom you were sealed for the day of redemption. That is what, that's a transaction that took place. The Holy Spirit sealed you to the day of redemption. Do not grieve him by throwing his gift back in his face. Let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and slander be put away from you along with all malice. Be kind to one another, tenderhearted, forgiving one another, as God in Christ forgave you. With the measure you've been forgiven, forgive. With the measure you've been shown mercy, be merciful. The debt went somewhere. Mercy, when we are wrong, cost something. Think about it. That debt that the man owed him, he's not getting it. He had to eat it. Right? I mean, he had to take that that financial burden on himself just to give this man his freedom. Your debt costs somebody something. It's not just Jesus. It couldn't even do it. The Bible says he could not just forgive it. As much as he might have wanted to forgive your sin, it costs somebody something. Jesus had to come. Uh, The sacrifice had to be made. The the debt had to be paid. And it was, he was willing to do it for you. Central to mercy is understanding that someone bears the cost of the debt. In light of the mercy that God has shown us by paying our debt, our unpayable, overwhelming, crushing debt, 
How ought we to treat those around us? Luke 1, this is Zechariah's prayer. It says, because of the tender mercy of our God, verse 78, whereby the sunrise shall visit from on high. I love this passage. It's so poetic. It's so beautiful. To give light to those who sit in darkness in the shadows of death, to guide our feet to the ways of peace. This is what Jesus wants for you, and he wants you to find it in him. Because of the tender mercy of our God, whereby the sunrise shall visit us from on high, to give light to those who sit in darkness in the shadows of death, to guide our feet to the ways of peace. That's what he did for you, and that's what he wants from you, from me. Are we able to? No. No. We are not able. The servant didn't get it. He thought he got off scot-free. He thought he had tricked somebody. He thought he had manipulated the system. He thought... His pleading was the source of his redemption. He didn't realize that it was the mercy of the king that was the source of his redemption. If he had understood that, there was nothing that he did, no amount of begging or groveling that got him off the hook. It was only the mercy of the king. If he had gotten that, he would have gone out and he would have shown mercy. Nothing you can do, nothing you can do can pay your debt. No amount of good works, no amount of groveling, no amount of self-abasement, no amount of charitable work or good deeds can pay your debt. Only the king's mercy. He's going to eat that debt. He's going to take it out of his own flesh and give it to you free. And if you get a hold of that today, that's why this this parable changed my world when I first heard it explained this way. If you get a hold of that, it's going to change the way you live people are going to be like what happened to you let me tell you what happened to me see there's there's this king who I owed a debt to an insurmountable debt and he called me in to pay up and I fell on my face and asked for mercy and he paid my debt for me now the hurt that you've, the debt you have, we have together here, doesn't seem so big. In fact, I love you. I wish you could know my king. In fact, I got a great church of people that would love to show mercy to you as well. So where are you today? Do you get it? There's no shame in saying no to this point. I have not gotten it. But from this day forward, I get it. I get it, and my life will change. Let me pray for you. God, thank you so much for these allegories, these heavenly truths conveyed through earthly stories. God, help us to get it. Help us to sink in. Help it not to just be another story that we've heard a million times. Help it to be something that will transform the way we live. When we start to see the splendor and the grandeur of your grace and mercy to us, help us to be transformed by it. Lord, I ask that you would just show forth your mercy on those today, maybe for the very first time, who are just starting to wake up to it and realize it's nothing that they can do to pay that debt. It's only by your grace and mercy that that debt can be paid. 
Thank you, God. With every eye bowed, every eye bowed, every head bowed, every eye closed. I want to give an opportunity for those who say, you know what? I get it. I can't pay this debt. I know I owe it. I can feel it in the pit of my stomach. But I can't pay it. I've tried. I've tried to ignore it. I've tried to work on it. But it just won't go away. And today they're ready to lay it at the feet of the king. And that's you today. If that's you today, I just ask you to slip up your hand. Just slip up your hand if that's you. Praise the Lord. For those who slipped up their hands, God, I just pray that you would just minister to them today. Lord, minister to them in a powerful, powerful way. Help them to be just impacted by your mercy and grace. Help them to see that their debt has been paid in full by no effort of their own. Therefore, we go and we are merciful and we are loving and we are forgiving. If that's you today, just silently pray with me. God, thank you for your mercy. Thank you for your love. Help me to be merciful and loving to those around me. I accept your gift that I did not earn of salvation, of a debt-free life. In the name of Jesus who took it on himself, who paid the pound of flesh that I owed. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, look at me, church. Go and do likewise. That's what Jesus said at the end of his stories. Now go and do likewise. Blessings. Have a great week.